In this lesson, we are looking at innate immunity. There are a lot of dot points in this. I'm going to split this into two short videos so that we can get through it. But just remember, there's a lot going on. All right, let's talk about the immune system. Um, there's a lot going on with our immune system as well. And the immune system is the body system of defenses uh, used to resist disease. Now, our body is like a donut, right? Think about a donut and then think about it elongating like a Pringles tin. We have a non-sterile digestive tract, right? Our lips are continuous with our anus. Think about that. It's pretty gross. The true inside of our body, so like the donut part where the blood is kept should be sterile, but everything else through from our nose all the way to our anus or our lips and our, to our anus should actually contain bacteria of some description. Now, our body uh, comes into contact with antigens all the time, and these are substances which trigger an immune response. Antigens uh, can be non-self antigens, right? And our body says, that's not meant to be in here. What are you doing? Um, and sometimes our body can actually attack self antigens as well. Now, normally our body recognizes uh, that they are self and doesn't attack our own tissue. However, an immune response can be triggered from a self antigen. It's usually what causes autoimmune diseases. Now, allergens are antigens which elicit uh, an, a really vigorous, more so than normal response. Uh, things like hay fever can, can set that off. And a pathogen is a molecule or an organism which can cause disease. And we sort of have that understanding already. All right, the immune system has two types of responses. Number one, the innate. It is non-specific. This is our first and second line of defense. And we also have our adaptive immune response. This is a specific and it's called our third line of defense. So we're talking about bombing everything that comes into our path or being very, very targeted with what it is we are trying to remove. Oops, got to fix that. Okay, so our first line of defense is a physical and chemical kind of barrier. And our innate immunity is this generally non-specific. It responds really rapidly to any invader, regardless of its type. This is a response that is not learned. It is not influenced by our past exposure. It's been shaped basically by evolution and our past experience of, of our ancestors. Our second line of defense, same idea. Okay, non-specific, a little bit, you know, a little bit more targeted, but still very non specific just reacts because something's happening now we have a natural resistance which we are born which we are born with but it's not really trainable right these first and second line of defense is not really trainable and so it's going to vary really really greatly amongst people so here are our two uh, lines when we're talking about innate immunity that's what our focus is and when we talk adaptive immunity we'll be talking about this one later on Okay, let's talk about our first line of defense. We are talking physical barriers. So they prevent entry into the vital organs for those pathogens. We're talking mainly our skin, uh, and that is our largest organ. So epithelial cells cover the skin, the respiratory system, the gastro gastrointestinal tract, urogenital tract. Basically, anywhere touching the outside world is going to be covered with these epithelial cells to form a continuous protective barrier. They're kind of expendable and they, they build this way. So like your digestive tract cells will kind of recover every four days, die off, reborn again. Um, they know they're going to be knocked around and bumped and scraped and all that kind of thing. So they're covered in this really tough external layer, of often called keratin. Um, and that becomes impervious to water and pathogens. Now, cilia in our airways, for example, may be able to sweep away foreign materials. Um, and we also, you know, do things like coughing and sneezing and blinking to help us there. We are trying to help kill pathogens that may enter the body before they actually do. Our first line of defense also involves chemical barriers, and we're talking things like saliva and tears and sweat, right? So enzymes that are in them can actually break down the pathogens, or they can just be kind of washing them away before they get in any further. Now, some of these can uh, do have the enzymes to kill the bacteria or whatever other kind of pathogen it might be. And uh, these are different from physical bodily fluids such as mucus or earwax because of this enzymatic uh, content. We also have microbial barriers. Now, this is a bit different. This is about the presence of normal flora. So normal bacteria, say in our digestive tract and vagina and all those kinds of things that prevent pathogenic bacteria from becoming established. So because that big old lawn of good bacteria is there, the bad ones can't get stuck in and therefore colonize. Now, our first line of defense comes in many different shapes and sizes, and it is all through that body. And you'll see that first line, non-specific, is going to appear mostly in our digestive system and our airways, where the openings to the world are very, very uh, frequent.